In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix your controller with an unresponsive bumper. In, uh, check out part one and part two of this video if you haven't already. In part one, I show you an easy fix that doesn't require any tools or anything. So please check part one first, and if that doesn't work, then come back here. Maybe watch part two as well to get more context. So this fix is going to require some soldering it's gone and you will need to take apart the controller you you're also going to need to buy a new switch an internal switch I'll link that switch in the description it's extremely cheap I bought a pack of 10 replacement switch off eBay from China for just 99 cents that's extremely cheap as long as you can get your hands on a uh, solder you can go to your school or college or if you know somebody who has a solder iron then you don't have to get it it's also pretty cheap it's only about ten dollars I think for a cheap solder iron you might need some uh, flux and some solvent I did not use any of these I'm no expert at soldering so don't follow my guide on how to solder but I just use a solder iron and was able to take off that uh, internal switch so I have no solder experience but I was able to take off that switch so you can also go to a local repair shop and ask them to solder this part for you maybe that'll work for a professional it's not going to take more than a couple minutes at most just to swap out one switch to another just get all the parts to them bring them the uh, replacement switch and tell them to just swap it out and maybe they'll do it for you and for extremely cheap. That's that. To take apart the controller, you should check out part two where I show a more detailed guide on how to open up the controller. You, uh, the screws on there are security Torx screws. Uh, in part two, I show you how to open those security Torx screws with a 1.4 millimeter uh, flathead. So you don't even have to get a Torx bit if you don't have one. If you have a security Torx screw driver, then um, even better. But if you don't have one, you don't have to worry. You can use a regular flathead. So the tools you're going to need, the things you're going to need for this fix are a new internal switch, uh, a Torx screwdriver or a flathead, and a solder iron. That's it. Also, you need some solder. That's also extremely cheap. Accidentally bought Xbox 360 internal switch instead of an Xbox One internal switch. So there's a slight visual difference in how it looks. It works perfectly fine. And uh, there's a slight uh, difference in the feel as well. I prefer the Xbox 360 one, that the, the one I replaced with the old one. So in, in my case, it turned out great because I like the Xbox 360 feel better than the Xbox One. It's much more clicky, the Xbox 360 bumper, so that's also something you should keep in mind. So I hope this fix works. It completely fixed my issue. Just like before, I'm going to open up my controller for a detailed uh, version of how I did it. You can refer back to part two of the video. I'll also show you, also showed you in the last video how to take apart the controller with a small flathead, 1.4 millimeter flathead, rather than using a security torch like this T8, like this uh, T8. I'm going to quickly go through this for a detailed version of this teardown. Go to part two. I'm just going to go through it extremely quickly. Take this apart. That goes that. I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to go. Now that's well, we can also take out the batteries and uh, Torx T8 security torque screw. There are four of them here. I'm going to quickly take them out. 
like I said before, refer back to part two for a detailed teardown and how to use a flat head rather than a torx to take it out if you don't have a torx. One of the screws is behind this uh, label here. I'm gonna poke at it and expose it. Now that, that's removed, we've taken out all the screws, place them somewhere securely, and just take out the face plate and also the back plate. This is the switch we have to take out. I've already taken it out. I'm shooting this video after I took out the switch. It's gonna look just like this. And you can see the other terminals on the other side. So what you do need to do is desolder these joints, uh, these desolder joints and uh, take them out. Now to the soldering, but like I said before, I'm not a soldering expert. This is the first time I'm doing some anything like this. So take your own precautions for following my advice. So first thing you gotta do is find the switch you wanna replace. You can find the leads on the other side. Take your solder iron, plug it into a socket, wait for it to heat up, then uh, put the hot iron tip to the leads and the solder on those joints Will start to melt. You can use a solder pump to take out that extra solder or you can just use a waste cloth to do it. I forgot to mention uh, about needing a solder pump in the beginning but you don't really need it even in my case I stopped using it and uh, moved to using a waste cloth at the end. Just, just take up the extra solder on the solder iron with the cloth. The solder tip is going to be extremely hot. Be careful not to touch, not to touch anything uh, sensitive with the tip. So just repeatedly uh, heat the solder at the four leads of the switch and uh, wait for it to melt. Slowly take a, take a cloth or take the excess solder on the iron itself and remove it. When it becomes loose you can flip the controller around. And once you got all the solder out, the most of the solder out, you flip the controller around and you can use your fingers or some tweezers to try to sh move the, the switch and try to take it out. When you do that you can see where the resistance is and if there's extra solder there you can heat it up you can uh, use the solder iron again uh, heat up the solder wick off the excess solder and uh, try it again until it comes completely loose and you can just use a tweezer or your fingers to take out the switch unfortunately I did not have my camera rolling when I took out the switch so I'm sorry like I said before, if you're not comfortable with this, you can always take this to a repair shop. Just take about the controller and tell them exactly what you want them to do. Tell them to take this switch out and put the new one in. You can also ask somebody else who knows how to solder to help you. If you're not an adult, please do not do this without adult supervision. Now that you have the old switch out, now it's time to put the new switch in properly orient the new switch just like the old one put it back into the holes the old switch left behind put it there take the solder put it next to the lead heat up the solder iron again and uh, apply the solder over there you can see the video about how we did it but uh, I'm not a soldering expert so uh, you should consult somebody who knows how to solder before doing this. I was able to do it, but uh,
be careful. Make sure that solder, the solder doesn't go everywhere and short any other circuit. So be extremely careful. Always, like I said before, you can always take it to a repair shop. Now that we have uh, soldered the new switch in place, we can put things back together. Now this thing fell off, but let's put it back together. Yeah, just like that. So before you, before we can put this back together, we are going to have to remove this thing, this plate, and we'll can put it back after we put the back plate in. So just take out these two things, and now that's out. We can put this back and be careful to put these things through the grooves in here and slide them in carefully and not bend them. You can always bend them back, but you know, why bend them in the first place? Okay, I just carefully align them and uh, that's pretty good. Okay, now that's done, you can put the batteries back in just to hold the back plate in while we work on the rest of the controller and put things back together. So this is good enough. Now we can put this display back together and uh, just place just like that. Carefully put it on top. Same here. And just be careful as to not break them. Okay. Now that's that's in perfectly well as well. Now, now you can just test out the both the bumpers to see if they're working properly. You can see there's something wrong with this one. It's not aligned properly. You can see that over here. So yeah. Now both of our bumpers work perfectly, so just make to just make sure that this is aligned and put together properly. Now that that's done, you can put the face plate back on. And to do that, take out these batteries, take one of these screws, put them through the center, and now the face plate is on. Perfectly. Now you can test the controller to see if it works before you put in all those screws, just to make sure we don't want to do all this work and not have the controller working in it. Have to tear down this controller again. So you can test the controller right now. I'm using Game Controller Tester on Windows to test my Xbox controller. There's probably a same similar feature on your Xbox console. I have an Xbox controller with a built-in Bluetooth, so if you don't have Bluetooth, you can just use a USB cable to plug it into your computer and test it. The name of the app I'm using is a Game Controller Tester, it's available on the Microsoft Store. So I'm just clicking all the buttons to see if it works, just trying out all the buttons and uh, everything seems to be uh, working great. Now I'm going to turn on vibration and impulse uh, options on Game Control Tester to just to check and see if all the vibration motors and all the other uh, triggers are working properly. And uh, this also seems to be working perfectly, so I'm not seeing any issues and uh, seems to be working pretty great. You can. Screw in the rest of the screws. Four screws for the two grips, two on the bottom and two on top. I showed you in the last video how to use a flat head to secure these screws. You can refer back to part two to see that if you don't have the Torx bit, so you don't have to spend any money. You can get the switches pretty cheaply. I got my 10 of my, the replacement internal switches for 99 cents. So that's extremely cheap. So all the, if you already, if you can already get a soldering iron and have a small flat head screw, the only cost of this repair is just 99 cents. 
and it came with free shipping from from China on eBay. So now that's securely in place. You don't need to over tighten these. Now that that's in place, you can put these uh, grips back on, just like that. Just push it in. That's done. Put in the batteries again. And that's done. Put her back in. And I can test if it works. Maybe you already tested this, but I can see it works. And both the results work. I hope the fixed worked for you. If you already had a solder iron or if you could borrow it for free, this fix is only going to cost you. 99 cent so it's an extremely cheap fix you don't have to buy a new controller it might cost you a little bit more if you have to take your controller to a solder shop a repel shop or something else uh, i think it will be easier than taking to the microsoft or just go to a local mo mobile repair shop or an electronics repair shop or anything of that sort and uh, they'll probably help you out if you are getting stuck somewhere in the process, drop a comment below. I'll try my best to reply to each and every one of them. I hope this fix helped you. Drop a like if you found this video helpful. Please subscribe as well. I need a thousand subscribers uh, to unlock some more features like community posts. So please subscribe to my channel. And uh, have a great day. Stay awesome.